This lesson explains some of the debugging features available in Texas. In the previous lesson, we developed the simple 6812 program that executed a loop 10 times and stopped. In this example, we will explore some of the features, debugging features available within Texas. The file lesson1.rtf and the file lesson1.uc are linked because they have the same first part of the name and are stored in the same folder. So when we open one file, Texas automatically opens all the other linked files. A vast amount of information exists as the computer executes software. A good debugger allows us to selectively filter this information, showing us only data relevant to the problem at hand. There are two aspects of this filter. First, what will we see? And second, when or how often will it be collected? The run mode allows us to adjust the level of detail observable during simulation. Strategic information is defined in the view box of the microcomputer window shown here. And this information is, will be dumped into the log window uh, during simulation. So, the first thing we must do is configure the view box so that it contains just the information we are interested in. In this example, we need register A and might be interested in the program counter and the, and the memory counter. So, register B, since it's not needed, will be removed. The condition code, removed. These four bits of the condition code, removed. SP, X, and Y are all removed. So that we just observe register A, the counter in memory, and the program counter. Let me assemble the program so this information is a little clearer. Again, to assemble, we click on the source code and execute the assemble command, which converts the source code into an object code, creating the listing file here and putting the object code, the machine code, into, into the program memory. The second thing we can do is specify the format of this information. For example, if we wanted to see this number in 8-bit unsigned decimal, we could use the D format. If we wanted to see the contents of memory location 4000, we could type in a number here. I don't want to change it, so I'll delete that. And then in this box, I can produce some of the various formats. For example, plus D uh, is a format showing the information as an 8-bit sign decimal. Uh, little h is 8-bit hexadecimal. And capital H is 16-bit hexadecimal. The other thing I can do is specify a number before the format. For instance, 5h will show this memory location as five 8-bit unsigned hexadecimal values, shown here. I'm not really interested in 4,000, so I'm going to delete that. A full list of the formats can be found in the help system associated with Texas. Let's go on. We can also use the microcomputer window to change information. And one way to do it is to click on the thing I want to change. For instance, if I want to change the counter, I can change it. And then I enter the new value that I want in the data window and type enter or click enter. That changes the value. Next, I want to show you the various run modes. I've, I'm going to tile the windows here so we can see them all. And again, the program has been assembled. And so, if I hit the Go button, then the program will run and eventually it stops. A lot of information has been dumped here in the log window. So what I want to do is selectively turn off the three aspects of the run modes so that we can see what each does. So first I'll turn them all off. Cycle view, instruction view, and log record. To clear the log window, I'm going to type control A, control X, and now when I hit reset and I run the program, we see it run, but nothing was stored into the, into the log window. This is the minimal amount of information, none. If I select just cycle view, reset, 
and run again, what we see in the log window are the memory bus cycles as this program executes. I'll clear this window, control A, control X, reset, and I will just set instruction view, turn off cycle view, so we just have instruction view selected. Okay. And now when I go, what we see is a list of instructions as they were executed here from the top of my program down to the, to the bottom. All right, clear this window, control A, control X, turn off instruction view, turn on log record. Okay, so now what we have, reset and go, we have the information up here in the view box is dumped after each instruction is executed. So we've seen the three aspects of, of what we can dump into the log window. Next, let's control when it's dumped into the log window. The first way we can control it is by setting the simulation speed, which tells how many instructions are executed per screen update. So I could execute five instructions and then dump something into the, into the view box. The second way, which is a little more uh, effective, is to set a scan point. Okay, a scan point's like a break point, except it doesn't stop. Scan points are very powerful, and so I'll show you how to create one. The first thing we do when we're using scan points is to shut off the, the automatic dumping into the log window. Again, I'll clear the one. Control A, Control X. Okay. So no information is going to be dumped as it executes. But I will add a selective spot. So if I pick some spot in my listing, listing file, right here, I'm going to right click and do a break at cursor. If I don't do anything else, I just hit a break point. But to make a, convert a break point into a scan point, I'm going to deselect this button. So with this check mark removed, you see the check mark is removed, what will happen is that when it gets to that spot in the program, you see the little red cursor here, right there, when it gets to that spot in the program, the information up here is going to be dumped into the log window. Okay, let's try it. Reset, go. Now if I look in the log window, rather than seeing thousands of lines of information, a line, uh, an entry has been placed into the log window every time the computer got to this spot in my program. And again, you can see the counter goes 9876543210 and then it stopped. Okay, so that's a scan point. If I had set this to a break point, okay, and control A, control X, reset, what would have happened is it would run to the break point and stop like a typical break point and then I could run it again, it would stop again at the breakpoint, run it again, it would stop again at the breakpoint, like a regular breakpoint. Okay. In summary, uh, we can see the various run mode commands by looking in the run mode dialog box. Okay, the mode commands are shown here in the mode menu. This is a very busy dialog, so we'll go slowly around the circle here. The first choice is whether or not we want the program counter to be highlighted in the listing file during execution. This gives us a visual picture of where our program is executed. And as we saw last time, the listing file can be colored so that we can tell how many times each instruction has been executed. The second set of choices are what you want the simulator to do when it faces a memory error. Like if you program inadvertently accesses an illegal memory location, typically we're going to want to halt. That's a mistake. Or if you try to read from unprogrammed ROM or read from RAM that has not been written to or you try to write to ROM, these are all the various mistakes that your program might make. And in this case, since they're all checked, those mistakes will cause the software to halt. We've already seen scan points and breakpoints. Again, this is a choice. What we do when we get a breakpoint, when we get to a breakpoint address, should you stop or just scan, which as we saw is adding an entry of the view box into the log file. And then the three modes that we saw, the cycle view, which shows us the bus cycles, the instruction view, which records the opcodes, that is, it executes, and the log record, 
which dumps the view box automatically into the log file. Uh, there are various other controls that we can specify, like what happens if we program tries to do an I.O. operation on an un unimplemented I.O. location, we can either halt or not halt, depending upon how we want it to uh, execute. Okay. And again, more information can be found in the help file. So in summary, Lesson 2 has illustrated some of the debugging features available within Texas. Thank you very much. And to exit, exit we will we will exit. You see we have changed and so we'll save these files as we go.